Welcome to this episode of Crime Watch. Money Mills, a person or group of persons who are used by other criminals to receive money in their bank account, typically money that is either stolen or fraudulently transferred. These other criminals are usually syndicated cheats involving in scams ranging from purchase scams to lottery and kidnap scams. The money mule will be asked to deliver a certain amount of money to another person, either in cash or through electronic remittance services or internet banking. The multiple transfers hide the source of money and allow the masterminds to evade detection as they are shielded by the mules. Between January 2012 and September this year, police investigated 226 cases where funds were fraudulently transferred into bank accounts belonging to Singapore residents. The amount of money involved in these cases amounted to a whopping 40.1 million Singapore dollars. What you're about to see is a reenactment of an actual case involving money mules. I just hand into an account. Which bank is this? CIK. Have you got any accounts I can transfer the money to? Come on, sit down. I need to talk to this guy. I've been talking to him online for about a month. He's 75 and uh, he thinks I'm his girlfriend. What did you say your name was? Monica. How much are we transferring into his account? 106,000. Okay. Just use the furniture business story, okay? Hello. Hey, Jack, baby. It's Monica. I need a favor. Yes? One of my customers is having trouble transferring money into my company's account. Can I use your account, baby? Okay. Can I have your account number, baby? 127. 127. 68621. 68621. Three. It's a saving account. Three. Savings. Hold on, baby. James, done? Thank you, baby. One of my customers will be transferring $106,000 into your account shortly. Listen carefully. Here's what I need you to do. $106,000, so much. I need you to go to the bank today and withdraw the money and transfer to me, okay? Okay. Thanks, baby. I can't wait to come to Singapore and see you. This is the last time I'll be speaking to men over 50 years. Ah, sorry. I have to change the amount to 60,000 instead of 106,000. Okay. So this is our receipt. Thank you. It's been four days. This guy is just not replying. He's reading my messages, but this idiot is just not replying. Maybe he died. Peter, at least we got $60,000 from it. Let's just write the rest off as just commission. $46,000 is too much to give away as commission. We need to do something to get our money back. Carla, ask me to go to Jack's house. Hey, baby, how are you? I'm good. Honey, I need a favor from you. Yeah, sure, baby. How can I help you? Yes? 
I'm looking for Jack. I'm Jack. Sorry, Uncle. I'm Monica's friend. Oh, come in. Actually, it's okay, Uncle. I'm just here to collect money for Monica. Oh, but I already told her I'm going to send her the money. Don't worry, I'll talk to her. Sorry, Uncle, but she told me that I must collect the money by today. No, I already told you I'll talk to her. I want to borrow the money and return the money soon. Huh? Borrow? But she told me you bought some furniture from her. No, someone bought the furniture, but the money was transferred to me. I only can give the money back to Monica. But that's not what she told me. You don't worry, I'll take care. Uncle, there's something wrong here. Monica told me a different story. Anyway, have you met Monica before? No, she's my girlfriend. She's coming to stay with me next week. Huh? Your girlfriend? I thought she said she loved me. She told me that she'd be staying with me. Uncle, there's something not right here. I think it's best that we report this to the police. Huh? Report what? I think she's been cheating us. How can a furniture cost so much? She's been lying to us. True, huh? My dad, I also report. He replied. Carla, I want you to contact him. Ask him where's the remaining money. Hey, baby. Honey, I'm so sorry. I was busy. Jack, I've been trying to contact you. How come you only transferred $60,000? Where's the remaining money? I will send you. I'm sorry. I had to use the money urgently. I promise I'll return. Please give me two weeks. Trust me. How can you do that? How can I come to Singapore by next week? Give me two weeks, please. Hold on, baby. He says he needs two weeks. Okay. Wait. Shall we ask him to do the other transaction? Can't trust him. Why you don't transfer money again? No. This time, we won't get him to transfer. We just need his account. Sean, can you ask your girlfriend to collect money from him? Sure. How? Trust me. You'll work out. Okay. Jack, in that case, I need another favor. Hello, sir. Have a seat. How can I help you? I was having a long distance relationship with a person. I suspect she might be a swindler. I met her online two months ago. She told me she ran a furniture business overseas. We started getting... mushy over the phone about a week after we knew each other. She said she's coming to Singapore to stay with me. Did she ever specify which country she lives in? No, I never asked. We normally chat once every... two to three days. She suddenly called me this morning. Honey, I need a favour from you. Yeah, sure, baby. How can I help you? You know about my furniture business, right? One of my customers is having trouble transferring money into our company account. Oh, okay. Could you go down to his house to get the money for me? Yeah, sure. So how much were you told to collect? About 40000 That's what I couldn't understand. She told me she dealt with rattan furniture. I can't imagine such furniture costing so much. So what happened when you went to Jack's home? My doubts were confirmed. Jack said that he didn't buy any furniture. Instead, he said that the money was actually transferred to him from someone who apparently bought the furniture. Did Jack give you the money? No. He said that he wants the money as a loan from Monica. Did you tell him that you were going to report this matter to the police? Yes, I did. What did he say then? He agreed to make a report as well. Do you have Jack's contact number? Yes, I have it. Nasri? His name is Jack. Ask him to come down for an interview, all right? Okay. Hi, may I speak to Jack? Hi, Jack. This is Senior Investigation Officer Nasri calling from Commercial Affairs Department. Can you come down for a case interview today? We met on internet. We checked on the website. 
or messenger. Sometimes she call me. What's her name? Monica. Do you have a phone number? I don't know. My handphone always shows the unknown when she calls. How long have you known Monica? One month. What was the reason she gave for transferring the money to you? She said she owned a furniture business. She said her company account has some problem. So she asked me to withdraw and send the money to her. How much was transferred to you? It's $106,000. Which country was the money transferred from? Switzerland. What did she do with the money? I transferred 60000 to her. The rest? I spent it. At any point, did you suspect the money that was transferred to you was acquired through fraud? I know her company don't make so much money, so she always asked me to take loan. But I always say cannot. I know she's not a good person. Did you inform Monica that you had spent the money? I will send you. I'm sorry. I had to use the money urgently. I promise I'll return. Please give me two weeks. Trust me. How can you do that? How can I come to Singapore by next week? Give me two weeks, please. Jack, in that case, I need another favour. 76000 will be transferred into your account later today. I need you to withdraw the money and hand it over to my friend in the afternoon. Baby, my friend will contact you about the meeting place. Will you do that for me, baby? Sir, I'm sorry for what I did. I don't want to hand the money to her. That's why I brought the money here. Jack, when the person calls later, can you meet her as planned? Oh no, I don't want to have any more trouble. Lah. No, but we need your help to arrest this lady. Okay. Lah. Nazri? It's Monica Frank. Tell her to come to the bus stop opposite SGH along New Bridge Road. Hello? Yes, I'm Jack. I'm near Chinatown. Can you come to the bus stop opposite SGH along New Bridge Road? Yes, I have the money. 3 p.m. Okay, bye. She wants to meet me at 3 p.m. at New Bridge Road. Najri, update Huang Kuan, Yihui and Serena. Tell them to meet us quickly. We only got 30 minutes. Yes, sir. Possible target spotted. Jack? Excuse me, ma'am. Senior Investigation Officer Kok Xiong from the Commercial Affairs Department. You are now under arrest as you are suspected of retaining benefits of criminal conduct. Let me go. I don't know anything. Our investigation shows they arrived in Singapore today. Yes. What's the purpose of your visit? I sent to collect money. Who asked you to come to Singapore? Sorry, I don't understand. Who sent you here? My boyfriend. What's your boyfriend's name? Sean. Is he here in Singapore? No. Do you know the money you were supposed to collect was acquired through fraud? Then why are you doing this? My boyfriend gave me commission. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me what this case is about? It's a case involving money mills. The usual scam, sir. Money was transferred into the bank account into a money mills in Singapore 
and the money mills will help to transfer the money out of Singapore, either by electronic transfer or by cash. We have arrested two suspects. One of them is called Jack Tan. He's a Singaporean, and the other one is Tanya Rat Jarachu Vivid, a Thai national. What evidence have you uncovered for this matter? Well, these are the bank records transaction of Jack, and there are also their chat records of his chat with the syndicate. Was any of the money recovered? Yes, sir. $119,000 from Jack and $76,472 was seized from Tanya Rat. All right, I'll review the case file and I'll get back to you shortly. Thank you, sir. Jack Tan was found guilty of dishonestly receiving stolen property, removing benefits of criminal conduct from jurisdiction, and criminal misappropriation of property. He was sentenced to 12 months imprisonment. Tanya Raj Jaru Travivit was found guilty of acquiring and removing another person's benefits of criminal conduct from jurisdiction. She was sentenced to 12 months imprisonment. The criminal syndicates that have been compromising email accounts and receiving funds through money mules are largely based overseas. These culprits are wanted by the police in their respective jurisdictions. The masterminds behind their scams are usually criminal syndicates which are highly sophisticated in their operations. They will use various means to deceive banks and financial institutions into transferring money into the bank accounts of money mules. These syndicates operate primarily through the internet and would use multiple layers of money mules in order to cover their tracks. They may offer you a commission, a job, a romantic relationship or as in some cases, marriage in an attempt to convince you to assist them to receive and transfer their illegal funds. This is a form of money laundering. Anyone can be a target of the syndicates. The public must be wary and not allow yourselves or your bank accounts to be used by these criminals. Jack Tan and Tanya Raj Jarutra Vivid were aware that they were operating as money mules by allowing their bank accounts to be used to transfer fraudulent funds from compromised bank accounts. Through prompt action from the officers at the Commercial Affairs Department, $119,000 was seized from Jack Tan and $76,472 was seized from Tanya Raj Jarutra Vivid. An order was then made to return the money that was seized from the letter to the victim who was based overseas. Jack Tan, who is currently serving his sentence in prison, reflects on his dealings with these fraudsters. I would advise them uh, that if they ever go on a social network, be very careful of these uh, scammers because they are, they are faceless. Uh, they will not uh, appear on video cam with you. They will either go on chat line or that. And when they ask you for an account number, try not to give it to them. But if you have, just when they transfer the money to you, just take the money and give it to the police. Here are some tips to ensure that you do not fall prey to online fraud. Do not disclose your bank account details to others except for the purpose of your own banking needs. Ignore or decline any request by online acquaintances or persons unknown to you to allow your bank account to be used for incoming fund transfers, especially if a commission is offered. Offers that are too good to be true are suspicious. If you're operating a business, be wary of sudden changes in payment instructions or payment accounts designated by suppliers or creditors. Always check with them if you are in doubt. Beware of emails or websites that ask you for your email account details. These may be phishing websites that aim to gain unauthorized access into your email account. Install the latest antivirus software on your computers and update the software regularly to prevent your computer from being compromised. If you suspect that you have been used as a money mule, lodge a police report and inform your bank immediately. If the money is still in your bank account, do not deal with it. Often, it is clear that there is something fishy about the funds. It may come from drug trafficking, money laundering, terrorism-related activities, or have been fraudulently obtained. Agreeing to accept such funds into your bank account and transferring them to another person are serious offences under the Penal Code or the Corruption, Drug Trafficking and Other Serious Crimes Confiscation of Benefits Act. A fine of up to $500,000 and a jail term of up to seven years is possible. It is not necessary for you to know with certainty that the money represents criminal proceeds. So long as there is reason to believe that the money is tainted, the offence may be committed. We would like to advise our bank customers to remember that their bank accounts are for their own personal use, to deposit money and to make payments. And we would like to advise them to not accede to any requests 
from anyone, be it a friend, a relative, an acquaintance, to transfer funds for them using their accounts, as that could get them into serious trouble. The public is also reminded that anyone who fails to report suspicious financial activities and who knowingly assists fraudsters may be investigated and prosecuted for their involvement in the scams. Coming up after the break, some tips for motorcyclists to look out for when turning right. Today, we will share some of the dangers that motorcyclists must know and avoid when turning right so that they can reduce their risks of being involved in accidents. Motorcyclists must never try to beat traffic by turning right as soon as the green light appears at a signalised traffic junction. Motorists who are going straight in the opposite direction will be caught by surprise as they are unlikely to expect any right-turning vehicle movements so soon after the green light appears. In addition, as motorcycles are generally smaller than cars, motorists going straight may not see the motorcyclists turning right and thus collide into them. Motorcyclists must always be patient and wait for the right turn arrow to appear before turning right. The rider, who was intending to turn right, should not have stopped beside the car which was proceeding straight. Sorry, sorry. Instead, the rider should be on the right turning lane or stop behind the car and only turn right when it is safe to do so. The collision between the two riders had occurred as the views of both riders were blocked. The first rider could not see the second rider as his view was blocked by the opposite lorry. The second rider who was overtaking had his view blocked by the lorry and could not see the right turning motorcycle. Motorcyclists must always see that all the opposite lanes are clear of oncoming traffic before turning right. In addition, motorcyclists must also look out for pedestrians who are crossing at signalised traffic junctions and ensure that they have crossed the road before turning right. Always take your time to make sure that there are no pedestrians crossing the roads before you turn right. This can help to save your life and that of others. We've come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. If you have any query or feedback, do feel free to email us. Until next month, I'm DSP Julius Lim, signing off.